Now that we've created a single place to hold all of our projects, let's get oriented with how bases are structured. Each base is made up of one or more tables. You see here we have table one. Now in this case, we're tracking creative projects. So I'm gonna go ahead and double click on table one and call this projects. That's going to be the focus of our table. Now a table should contain a list of items of the same type, like people, ideas, or in this case, projects. Now there are four creative projects that we're working on. I'm going to go ahead and add those now. Create training videos, record podcast series, publish blog posts, and I have one more project, so I'm going to select this bar here, launch video ad campaign. Great. I've added all four of the projects and we've added this to what we call records, which are just the individual items in a table along with all the relevant details. Now, there are some important details that we'd like to track with each of these projects. In this example of creative projects, some of the most common fields include status, key dates, like start date or due date, budget, content type, and tasks. When you start from scratch, you're given a couple fields by default. We've got notes and attachments. In this notes long text field, you can store long pieces of text like notes, action items, or copy. So in our creating training videos, I could add script notes here. If I'd like to add an image associated with this record podcast series, I can go ahead and select this plus sign and drag and drop that image and then upload it. With the attachment field, you can store relevant images, videos, and more directly in your records. And then I can preview, download, or visualize them in different ways right in our base but I'd like to add a couple other additional details. The first of which is status. In order to add a new field, we can select this plus sign here, name that field, and then selecting this dropdown allows us to configure the type of information we'd like to represent. There are over 25 different field types to choose from to help you represent your information best. In this case, let's select single select. Using the single select option, you can create a custom set of dropdown options to tag each record. In this case, we're creating a different status. And so, upcoming, in progress, or complete. That's the different statuses that our team's working with. You can also customize the color here. maybe making this complete a bright green color. We'll save that. And now selecting in this dropdown, I see each of the different options that I've configured. So I'll add a status for each of these. And this is starting to come together. Additional fields that we'd like to add are key dates. So let's go ahead and add a new field, title this due date, select this dropdown, and a date type field is a great way to represent this. Now we have a number of different date format options if you'd like to check those out. And we can just go ahead and save it. Selecting in this cell here opens up a mini calendar to choose multiple dates from. So I'm just going to add our due dates now. We can also add a start date. So. Same steps, selecting the plus sign, start date, selecting this dropdown, and to find a field type quickly, you can just search the name of that field type. And save. Let's go ahead and add some start dates here. Great, this is really coming together. We can also move this, we can also select and drag this date field so that it's start date and then due date. 
So we've got a status and key dates. Some other important details we'd like to track might include budget or content type. So let's add that now. Selecting the plus sign, budget, selecting this dropdown, adding currency. You can set the currency symbol and the precision. Let's save that. And I'm just going to go ahead and add our budget. The last type of field I'd like to add here is our content type, because we have lots of different types of content that we're working with, ranging from videos to podcasts to blog posts. So let's add a new field here, call this type, select single select, and then add some different options, video, podcast, and blog. And we'll save that. Now I can tag these options to each of the different projects. This is looking great. All this information is relevant to the projects we're tracking and we're expanding on what we call fields, but we'd also like to track tasks. As a reminder, tables are meant to contain a list of items of the same type. And if we'd like to get granular on our tasks, it may actually warrant creating a second table. So selecting create empty table and naming this tasks. That way we can start tracking task level information for each of our tasks. Now, if I take a look at projects, I have creating training videos. I have four tasks in mind for that project. And so I'm going to copy those now, head over to the task table and paste those in. Great. Now I don't need notes and attachments, so I'm going to delete those. However, I'd like to know if I've completed a task. And so let's go ahead and add a checkbox field. Using a checkbox field, you can check off tasks or flag important records with a star, a flag, or other custom icon. You can customize across each of these different icons. And let's save that. So now I know I've completed two of those tasks. Tasks and project, they have a relationship. In this case, one project can have multiple tasks. And so in order to represent that relationship, we have to use a very special field type. And that field type is called a linked record. So navigating back to projects, let's add a new field. And let's call this tasks. Selecting this dropdown, we'll select link to another record. We see the different tables that we have available in our base. Let's select tasks. And then we'll save. When selecting in this cell, I see the four tasks that I have added to our task table. By selecting them, it actually adds that as a task underneath this specific project. So just adding each of these tasks, just to make sure it's extremely clear, we'll move this forward and make this row height tall. That way we can see all of our tasks. Now hopping over to our task table, I now see another field has been created and this is associating with our projects. And we can connect this in the reverse direction. We see all four projects here, and I'd like to link that to this project. There are lots of other ways to add tasks across our other projects. Let's go back to our projects table. I have three tasks in mind for this record podcast series. Find a host, add a new record, order a mic, adding a new record, and scheduling interviews. Great. So I've added these three subtasks to this project, and if I jump over to our task table, I now see these are listed out. This is looking great. We've got projects and tasks connected together, and this is just an example of a one-to-many relationship. One project to many tasks. 
linked records create relationships between different tables, and in this case, between projects and tasks. This reduces duplication and creates easy access to information through those relationships. Now, there are other types of relationships that I'd like to track. In addition to projects and tasks, I'm also working with three different clients. So let's go ahead, add a new table, create a clients table. Now, I'm just going to add client one, client two, and client three. So hopping back to our projects table, going to add a client linked record. Call this clients, link to another record, link to clients, and save. So the same steps when we linked to tasks. Let's bring this forward here. And now I'll associate a client with each of these different projects. That way I know which client is for which project. Great. So I now have our projects associated with each of our different clients. And if I look at our clients table, I can see that the projects have linked.